thanks for tuning in right back at it talking another mr a's thoughts right here on the double rt boxing show i am your host mr a the host of your show hit that thumbs up support your show it is your show like we just mentioned now it's not being talked about by many folks it came it made a quick little buzz and that shit was swept out the door Picked up by the trash man, hauled off to the site, old news, done old week's trash. And that is uh, Jesse Vargas ducking. You know, he ducked. But I want to leave it to you. Like I said, is it duck squad or is it business? It's Mr. A's thoughts. I'm going to say it's a duck, but it's up to you to say is it a business move? Because most, there's always that side of the conversation when you're talking the the box and banner and it seems to see uh you know what type of fan the person is errol spence tara crawford is someone making a business move is someone ducking that fight is uh crawford making the fight spence ducking it or is it a business move you know then you got louise ortiz dylan white you got aj um AJ Wilder, you know, you got, you got all types of ducking and business, you know, I, I believe some of them are, it's funny, you, you, you can always make the argument, but it's always side A for boxing banter, it's a duck, the motherfucking duck squad just stamped, fresh off the press, stamped its papers, got a new member, Mr. A's thoughts, we're gonna welcome the to the duck squad Jesse Vargas Jesse Vargas you know the, the, the news was you know he was mandated by the IBF for the f- uh, f- first contender eliminator between him because the, the IBF spots number one and two are empty Ugas got the number two spot by defeating Ray Robinson. The IBF, like, they take the bottom half of their thing, like, six through 15, seven through 15, finds two people in there, and they make them fight for the number two spot. Then, like, the top five fight for the number one, and then those two fight the champion, you know? Usually, usually they get there each shot, but rarely do they fight each other to see who fights the champion. Well... The number one spot was being open, and it was between Jesse Vargas, he got mandated, versus Quatrilo Abu Kakarov. You know, if you've been following the show, you know I've been pushing him for a year and a half, following him through the rankings. And now, you also know what the Double R T Boxing Show is. We cover the rankings, you know, so that way. When people do get their opportunity, they're not considered a bum. And the reason why I, I believe that is important, one, I like I like boxing. It makes it a little more interesting, entertaining for my time, you know. But people are always, you know, the boxers always say it's a business. It's a business. Oh, that's not enough money. Oh, that's so-and-so is not money. If we just always say, oh, the best versus the best, the best versus the best, if that fight happens, they're going to be forced for trilogies and rematches, you know? We don't want the same recycled shit. Bad enough we're having this hard time getting the first match, you know? If we start start to say, hey, number eight ain't so bad. Yeah, he ain't a number three, but he might be a cool little stay busy fight. He, bring, he brings a, a kitchen sink to the sink to the fucking battlefield go knock him out you know can you can y'all box that aggressive ass you should be able to but on a hard night number seven might give you a tough fight you know if, if we start putting emphasis on six seven five number four uh, eleven they can't always use well it's a business if we sh- as a fan show interest that hey we'll, we'll pay money to see you fight so and so they could stop using that as an excuse you know, it's a business, it's a business, but well, fuck, dude, we, we pay to go see, we, we, instead of, see, if you're making big, if you're making bitch ass excuses, we'll pay money, since you, since you number two don't want to fight number five, we, we'll pay money to see number four and eight fight, we, we know they're dope, fuck you, fucking being a little ass bitch about money, and once they start saying we will pay money to see other people, 
you know, I you know, so I think it's important for the whole rankings. Us as fans, we get a better product and uh, a better storyline within our sport we love. You know, it's like I, I, I do. I talk more in detail about this on tomorrow's morning show, the Double RT Boxing Show. If you know it goes live. So back to the subject. This is a Mr. A's thoughts on the Duck Squad. You know, Jesse Vargas, who's I ordered for Quatrilo, turned it down. Now, now Quatrilo is taking that spot to fight Spence, but he has to defeat Kahita O'Hara. O- O'Hara, you know, that's a whole another prediction breakdown segment. But the duck stay tuned to the double rt boxing to watch that prediction and breakdown because it will be coming now the duck jesse vargas turned this fight down for what for what he just came off a draw with broner a draw with delorme for the wbc silver for silver he, he had a draw that silver belt was on a on a line a week later against i think I believe it was down in mexico or italy you know a 21 and 0 and a 14 and 1 or something like that guys that belt just boom shot up on the fucking tables now what can vargas make a business move out of this that's his shot to get a number one fight with earl spence unless hey we're throwing in the air some mr ace thoughts we talk about it you know since he was in line for a sean porter supposedly silver fight trying to word it speak into existence winning the silver can sean porter somehow be talking to a you know a fight two fight deal three fight deal go fight vargas over on the zone is that the business move that could be going you know because what else is out there for vargas you know what out there could be a better fight for Jesse Vargas? You see. Jesse Vargas, ranked number two by the WBC. Ahead of him is Danny Garcia, number three, Quatrilo, right behind Jesse Vargas. WBA, Jesse Vargas is number two, behind Best Putin and above Jamal James. IBF, he's number three, right behind him, Quadrilo. That's two sanctioned bodies, Quadrilo's right behind him. And WBO, he's number three at Terrence Crawford. Could he be the big name that Terrence Crawford needs right now? You know, considering top rank don't got, they do not have big 147 names. They got Egis, who's fighting on the undercard of a uh, Hooker and Sacido. Um, they could possibly work with uh, Ellis, Rashidi Ellis. Now that Golden Boy is tied on the zone, so well, um, Crawford and the zone. I'm sorry, Jesse Vargas could fight Ellis. I mean. Because, yeah, I don't know what Crawford's going to do, but, yeah, it's the Jesse Vargas. That's all Jesse Vargas could, I could think have is Rashidi Ellis at the 147. Unless he's getting a Sean Porter fight, there is no big... Unless, like I said, it's Rashidi Ellis. That's a that's an in-house stay busy fight on the Zone Network. If, if Golden Boy and... And uh, match room want to play together, right? That's a nice little that that'd be a biggest name on Rashidi Ellis' career, and it'd be that type of passageway fight for Jesse Vargas. But why would you take that type of fight with no reward when you could fight Quadrilo to fight Earl Spence for the belt? You know, it's like Jesse Vargas, you shouldn't really need money. When you always talking, you want to be champion. Ah, uh, I want to be champion. I want to be champion. And here you are, but opportunity to fight Earl Spence. You just got to beat this no namer, an unknown namer. But yet you turn down, and people, are like, oh, he don't want to fight Earl Spence. 
Don't be so quick to look over who he's not fighting. This dude's been climbing the ranks, you know, holding down the WBC silver. He, It's because he gave up the belt. Sean Porter was able to get the belt that they eventually gave up that Jesse Vargas was fighting for. So, just quick Mr. A's thoughts. And again, I think it's a Duck Squad member, the newest member, Jesse Vargas. Let me know what you think. 6 a.m., live edition. From here on out, tune in.